he responded to a question about linebacker. Uh, do you have a full rundown of the linebacking core? Um, well, I mean, you have the two positions put together. You have inside linebackers. Again, if you're running a four-two-five, you think of the two at the second level, uh, and then your strikers will be that hybrid safety outside backer. Uh, so it's say at. Uh, can't run four two five without athletic linebackers. Jordan Bowman and Clemson knows that. Hello, like, duh. But the advantage that Miami has on the roster as opposed to past years is the athleticism of linebacker, and you choose to play the unathletic guys and have them run in space. How's that going to work? You saw how it worked. Um, so yeah, that wasn't great. Um, in terms of your inside linebackers. Um, I would like to see that be an open position, um, an open position battle at least. Uh, you do have Bradley Jennings coming back. Uh, Zach McLeod can play there. He also flexes down to defensive end for the bowl game so he can get experience there and maybe be a rotation guy. Uh, Tyreek Austin Cave, Corey Flagg, uh, Sam Brooks, um, Deshaun Trotman in this class, the Avery, uh, Avery Huff. Um, you know, so you have options there, but again, I would like to see more athleticism at that side or at that position. Uh, and hopefully some of those guys are able to step up at, uh, at striker. You're looking at Gilbert Frierson and the rest, you know, hopefully a Keontre Smith has also played that position. He's very good. Amari Carter, I would like to see come down towards, uh, that striker position as opposed to being a middle of the field safety, just cause I think it's, it's a skill set a little bit more. And, um, I think he might be less likely to get uh, those targeting penalties because I think that the targeting penalties were because he would traverse a, a far distance in the secondary and then the targeting would happen at the point of contact. But if he were a little closer to the box, he wouldn't have so far to go. And that would then not have him target, if that makes sense. Um, at least in my head, what I'm saying makes sense. I hope it, I'm saying it right. Uh, but hopefully Omari Carter will be on that side as opposed to the safety side. But uh Again, there's talent there, uh, but we need to coach them up. Hopefully, uh, Ishmael Aristide is helping uh, to continue to have the striker position uh, play well, and hopefully John Packey can help uh, unlock the key to improve, improve performance from the inside linebackers as well. So Anthony is also asking whether Miami struggles in recruiting the inside linebacker position. Yeah, totally. Um, and I think it's because of trying to keep up with the Joneses of the world and not necessarily leaning into where we need to be. But again, you get guys like Sam Brooks and Avery Huff, for example, who are like the real, where the, the athleticism is increased at that position. Those guys, Corey Flagg is more athletic, uh, you know, than some guys in front of him. So is Tyreek Austin Cave. Those four guys in the last two classes, well, not this class, but, you know, previous classes, but you're not, you're playing them some rotation snaps, but you're not playing them as the foundation of the defense. So you're addressing it because by keeping up with the Joneses, I mean, you're going to try to get those Alabama sized guys. You know what I mean? 6'3, 240, things like that. We're not an Alabama sized team. So we're not going to have, I mean, a guy of that size in Miami probably plays defensive end to be perfectly honest, you know? Um, and then you miss out on guys who maybe have the athleticism to play at that level, like a Justin Flo who ended up staying on the West Coast and going to Oregon, and Miami was involved in that recruitment all the way to the end. But, you know, you probably miss out on some other guys because you're all not all in, but you're heavily in on Justin Flo. Um, but you don't get those guys. So, again, you have these guys who have increased athleticism, but you don't play them. So the struggle is getting these every, – everybody's All-American linebacker, so you don't get those guys, but you do get guys who can fit if you give them things to do that fit their skill set, but we don't play them or we play them and have them do other things in the scheme of the defense. So then what are you doing? So, yeah, there has been some uh, struggles recruiting the linebacker position for sure. Um, and I think and I think I wrote about this before, but if you look back at it, that recruiting clients of Pinckney, Quarterman, and McLeod five, six years ago, after that – Miami whiffed on every linebacker for years because nobody wanted to come and sit behind those guys. So even as they're sophomores in college, figuring, okay, let's go get a good class. So maybe not the year right behind them, but two years behind them so that they could, these, this next class can be freshmen, their junior year, maybe redshirt freshmen or sophomores, their senior year and ready to take over. We didn't even have that happen. They got to their junior year. We didn't have that happen. They came to their senior year. 
And then and then was like, okay, we'll maybe get some guys, Avery Huff, Sam Brooks, and see what happens down the line. But it got to the terminal end, and there was no ready-made replacement because everybody behind them that you tried to recruit, you did not get. Because you say, look, we're not going to come and sit behind these guys because they started from day one. They're going to continue to start from day one, from since day one until day last. And where's they're going to be playing time for me? And so, yeah, you didn't have that stacking classes, not even year over year, but even, you know, in a two-year block, you didn't have that at linebacker. You got the class of Quarterman, Pinkney, and McLeod, and then pretty much not a damn thing. And, yeah, that's a struggle. 